Third quarter, off and away. You know, I can zoom in. There we go. And it looks like it'll be free kick to Gosford to start off. And then that was around a yard that kicked that. And then the ball will go out on the full again. Free kick to the Bombers. That little Sky Bailey there. Yeah, a little Sky Bailey because in the forward line over here on the right we've got Ashley Flack, Georgia Butler, and Brooke Holly Peachy. I think that was the same person that were in the late previous quarter that Hannah Page was getting a bit angry with. Good hands by Sky Bailey. Absolutely awesome in the back line. Contest breaking out there. Sorry for the lack of commentary. I'm currently <laughs> eating food. Something I don't really want to talk about because it's really off topic. <coughs> anyway, back to the commentary. <laughs> Looks like we've got another contest there. Oh, looked like a fight was almost about to break out. Ooh, bit of bumping going on there. Bit of pushing and shoving. It's escalated to a second level up. Heavy bumping. Even though obviously it's natural to do that in AFL. It looked like after those two big hard bumps, it's going to escalate again to punches. And some good hands there by Tori McDonald Stewart. Someone who I wouldn't usually expect to see be put in the back line. And a bit of a shout out to Tori McDonald Stewart. Tonight is her 18th birthday party, which will be held at the Berkeley Vale Rugby League Club. So, yeah, happy 18th birthday, Tori. Officially an adult now. Anyway, back to footy. Look, Young. A good kick by Arana Young to Megan Jenkins. Jenkins won that footy pretty good. And no mark do. Justin Kelleher looked like she like shoulder charged her into the ground though or just gave her a really heavy bump. And the ball's gone out on the boundary again. And it'll be a free kick to the Bombers, I just realised that, to Hannah Williams. Good spoil there by Crooks, I believe. And I believe it'll be a free kick to the Bombers. And yeah, it is. So Oh no, it's a throw-in, no free kick at all. It's a throw-in by Joss Kelleher. And a good kick. It's a good kick out to a little contest there. Best to just go to a player individual. Most preferably one who's out in front. Arani Young, beautiful kick out to Crooks. 
No mark, do by Crooks. She plays on though. Bit of a hat trick there. Might not have worked out though. And still having a bit of a run there. Ariana Young managed to get the football back again. And have a bit of a run. Something a bit extra. And a good tackle by Megan Jenkins. And Crooks is all by herself. And gets a good tackle to finish the job. And a good kick by Kelleher. Collins gets the football back again. A good kick out to Crooks. And a good kick by Crooks. And Ashley Page kicks her out back into the square. Oh, that's Sophie D'Amico, the fullback there. That's on Corey Walters. He's also played quite well. And probably might get a mention for the Tigers when it comes to best on ground. Maybe Gosford RSL or Eleanor Hotel Raffles or something like that, so. what they award to for best on ground, or maybe they don't award best on grounds at all at the Gosford Tigers. But anyway, it's a free kick. It's Maddie Kasarovsky with the ball. Oh, no. Whoops, I didn't see that. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention to who had the ball. And we've got 12 minutes, 35 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. So, no one apart from Gosford has scored just yet, and that was another behind to the Tigers. So, one goal, two, eight, and Clarny Vale still have a moderate lead ahead of them. Six goals, one, 37. It's looking quite well here. A bit of a bump there. Pretty good one by Jessica Lucas. And it'll be a free kick to Ashley Page. She goes up high. And Dixie Butler almost on the football. Domenico ended up getting it back. And Taylor Thorne is desperately trying to get rid of the ball there. Obviously, it's not what you meant to do. Anyway, it was the umpire's ball. Attempted kick by Jasmine Mandy. Watch it when you open this door, Nate. There's a young fellow there, so don't hurt him in the back. I thought I'd come and have a beer with Harley. Oh. Ronnie Young almost had the ball there. It looked like Tash Gregory was. Oh no, there was Megan Jenkins there. Having a bit of a bump. Caitlin Sims gives Justin Kelleher the ball, who has paid the free kick. Nice long kick. Holly Peachy doesn't get there in time. Bit of a bump there by Collins. And it'll be a throw in. Decided to just put it down instead of giving it. Lucky when Collins did put it down, it wasn't actually on the field. Or else it would have been a 50 if Kalani Vale had a free kick. That wouldn't be too good for the Tigers. Dixie Butler's running hard to the ball. No, no tackle by Emily Crooks. Butler gets to the ball in time. She does well. 
Is it, is it Jasmine Norley yeah. Have a look. Can you see the text the decides right? not to try and put her off. Butler takes her yeah. time nice and well and it's looking too good. And that will be another behind. So six goals to 38. What the score will sit at. And it looks like Emily Crooks isn't paying too much attention there. Probably why she didn't end up getting the ball. Sarah Hudson gets away with the ball. A good disposal. Paige gets to the ball as well. With assistance from Sims. Hudson almost got it back. It looked like a throw. Lucky it wasn't. So I can see that the umpire is looking at every move made by each player on the field. Probably not the ones behind him. Nice high kick. Bit of a bit of bumping between Holly Peachy and number 22. He isn't on the list. Oh no, it's actually 32. So I can't really see that well. And Jenkins probably needs to work on her bumping a bit more. And Josh Kelleher gets it away. And good kick. And Josh Kelleher, Megan Jenkins head off to the bench. With Belle Jenkins taking her place along with Beth Wood. The ball goes back to Arana Young and Maggie Healy who will fight for the ball. Lucky umpire didn't call a high there against Maggie Healy. And Arana Young refuses to dispose of the ball and umpire will call a ball up, I believe. Like a good tackle there. Yeah, look, it looks like it'll be a free or not, no free kick. It will be a ball up to the umpire. And we've got another contest there. Page is involved. Almost made a good tackle there. Almost made a good tackle. Page tries to get the ball again. She went for another shot for a consecutive possession. Um, Looks like it's starting to get a bit aggressive there again. Yeah. And the umpire throws the ball up. Seems, and I didn't see who the tiger was that was in the ruck. And a good tackle by Jasmine Mandy against Shade Grieve. A good bump by Norley and Holly Peachy. A bit of bumping action. And uh, could have possibly been called a throw. It wasn't. Holly Peachy gets a good mark of the ball again. Holly Peachy goes out to Georgia Butler. Gets the ball again, Dixie Butler. Can't pick up the ball there. She can't pick it up. Either it's somewhat covered in grease or something, or she just can't pick it up. Yeah. Well, there's a bit of a punt. There was a bit of a fight breaking out there between Collins and Butler. And that was definitely in the back. Umpires refusing to call anything. Butler, no offence to Georgia Butler, but I don't really know how she missed it from a soccer kick in the square. Anyway, spectators giving the umpire a bit of tap there. The umpire just decides to go with what they reckon is best. So Butler will be kicking it. Yep, 
Georgia Butler will be going for the shot. If she can kick left foot, she might be all right. If she's good at snapping her, she might be all right. And nah, no go, nah, no goal. Then it feels it even a behind. Oh no, there's no behind. Actually, they didn't even score that second behind earlier in the quarter at all. They've still scored one behind, so it's six goals, one still. 37 to 8. They're both doing quite well here in their defence line. And Sophie D'Amico tries to NFL throw it. And that will be Bell Jenkins' free kick. Bell Jenkins goes to Page. Page out to Tash Gregory. Tash Gregory might have a chance for goal here if she lines it up well enough and takes her time with the drop punt. And looking good. And that's a goal. Another goal to the Bombers. Another goal to put up on the board. So seven goals, one forty-three. To Gosford, just one goal, two behinds, eight points. Just having a drink there. Anyway, that, that looked like well, could have been a good tackle there by Ben Jenkins. Ashley Flack decides to let number 12 get to the ball first. A good kick by Paige and behind. That'd be seven goals, three behinds, 45 to eight. A goal. And a consecutive behind to start the scoring for the Bombers in this third quarter. But still enough to maintain their strong lead. And not just without a third place. I thought actually flat mark that. Good kick by Shade Grieve and that will go out of the boundary. Looked like Beck Collins refused to go for that. Like she didn't care too much about getting the football. Georgia Butler throws the ball in. And Butler tries snapping it. Unlucky attempt. A bit of push. A bit of a shoulder charge there from Jody Carroll, number 12 for the Tigers. And a good kick by Shade Grieve, I believe it was. And some good hands by Ashley Page, continuing her strong form once again. <laughs> Ashley Page goes for a shot for goal, and it looks beautiful. Looking beautiful like the score so far, so eight goals, three, 51 to just one goal to behind, eight. That kick was as beautiful as the result on the scoreboard with 25 seconds left to go in this third term. Paul, at the end of this game, you're one of the guys who were nominated to do the kick for cash. Who is? You. President. Okay. okay. So, Woo, go Paul, kick for cash, mate. Kick for cash and some more money. 
And the siren will just about go now. Yep, there it is. So Clannyvale have luckily managed to up their lead. Eight goals, three fifty-one to one goal, two eight. A bit of more background info on Dan Amity, who is playing his three hundredth game, senior game for the club next. He came to the Bombers in nineteen ninety-three as an under seventeens player. In nineteen ninety-five. He won the Central Coast AFL Reserve Grade Best and First Award and a Premiership as well. So, Reserve Grade 1 with the Premiership in 1995. In 96 to 97, he won a scholarship and attended the Cary Baptist Grammar College in Melbourne. And he returned to the club in 1998 and he was part of the, he was part of the first grade Premiership side. And in the following season, in 99, he went to the Tamworth AFL where he played in the representative team that year. In the following year, in 2000, which was, the f which was the inaugural season of the Black Diamond AFL, he returned to Kalani Vale and he's been there since as a regular, as a regular first grader, but occasionally plays reserve grade as well. Now 25 years since his arrival, Jonah will become the club's games record holder. Dane Amity has won two first grade best and fairest, has been three times runner up, won two first grade and one reserve grade premiership, represented the league on six occasions and was named in the Bombers 30 year all-star team in 2008. He was made a life member of the Kalanagal Australian Football Club in 2013 and a life member of the Black Diamond AFL in 2016. His milestone is not only the milestone that the club will celebrate this week with Scott Reid to play his 350th game for the club and Justin Daly, his 250th. So up next boys, I congratulate you on with the rest of the Bombers Club on your achievements and I wish them all the best for the day.